All right, we're being recorded today. Welcome, one and all, from across the country. We got a great turnout today, so I know you guys are just loaded with great questions for us. Um, today is December tenth, twenty fifteen, and this is our fifty fourth mastermind call. Wow, more than a year now, and. Uh, going into 2016, and uh, we'll probably be saying this time next year that, uh, you know, we, we, I think we've got probably 50, 60 people on the call so far. So th by this time next year, we'll be saying, remember, we only had 50 or 60. We'll be in the hundreds. So I was just, I was just summarizing for everyone. Um, we just came back, and I, I don't know if we met any of you there. Uh, we just came back from the Triple Play Realtors Conference. Uh, Triple Play is for uh, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania Association of Realtors, and it was a great turnout, and uh, we kind of took our message on the road, and it's just really gratifying to, you know, to get the response that we're getting from agents across the country. So you, you guys that are on the call now are pioneers. You were really here at the beginning, and we will always appreciate that, and we'll always value your business. We also, we probably, I can tell from looking at the, the call log here, we've got at least four or five, maybe six people that are prospective clients, um, please, if you guys, there's no bad question. If you guys have any question, feel free. And this is an open forum, so um, although you're muted out, anytime you want to make a comment, anytime you have a question, anytime you want to add to the discussion, hit star six, and then just pause for a second, and then hit the number one, and you'll get put in our question queue. And, and anybody that knows they're going to have a question or a comment, can do that right now. Hit star six and then hit one. And I, we already have Roger. We're going to start off with Roger today. But before we do that, um, partners, Tim, anything you want to add? No, I'm just glad you guys made it back in one piece. It was a great show. I think we made a lot of great progress. We also, for any of you who are on the call who are expecting additional information to come to you shortly, uh, we are pulling all that data into our system today. And We'll be sending you some additional information back from the show, uh, those of you who requested additional info, and we look forward to helping you get ready to rock and roll in the new year by uh, having you have a great new lead source to go uh, revolutionize your business. But that's about all I have right now. Things are moving along fine, and uh, we're happy about where we are. Excellent. Chad, anything you want to share? Yeah, I wanted to, so as, as you guys may or may not know, I'm not in a sales role, but I went to the show with Jim, and what was really rejuvenate, like encouraging to me, and, and kind of rejuvenated my excitement in this. I mean, I'm always excited, but I, I usually work with people as a trainer. But to see all the the, the new agents, or not new agents, but the, some of the top agents in in those three associations, to see the the light come on when they understood what we did was so encouraging to me because we were in a room of 10,000 people and we were the only booth that was doing what we were doing. And when you can see the light in people and, and successful agents' eyes when they understand the opportunity in this space, that was so cool to me to see. And we probably talked to 500 agents and most of them are going between 20 and 200 transactions a year. So they're successful. They've got good businesses and they see the value and in, in, in establishing a niche like this. So that, that was really cool. I just wanted to share that, that that's a really exciting thing, thing for me this week. Um, and a lot of people, a few people have already signed up for Probate Mastery. Some emails went out this week while we were gone. Um, the December Probate Mastery group training will start on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, and it will run the next the ne it's three consecutive Mondays. So I believe the dates are the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th. If you haven't signed up for that, um, you should have gotten an email from us with a link, a direct link. But you can also go to alltheleads.com under the system, click on education and training, and the blue button says get started now. You can sign up for that upcoming training. Um, and that's all I've got for today. Excellent. And Chad, you know, I you just I just flashed on one gentleman that I met at the event. I don't remember his name now, but he was wandering by and I kind of grabbed him and said, boy, we got something unique for you. And he, he says, I've been in the business 30 years. There's nothing you could tell me that I haven't heard before. And about five minutes in, he said, you know what? You did it. I've, <laughs> this is unique. I've never, never seen anything like this before. So it, it, oh, I mean, the, the, the big Jersey guy, I know you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. He's in so. like two or three counties, right? 
Yeah, exactly. I think, he, yeah, he's taken one so far. He's going to take two more. So, anyway, guys, enough about us. Um, this call's about you. Please, star six, and then hit the number one to ask a question. We're going to start off today with um, Roger Lisi. Just about an hour ago, he shared something with us, and I said, Roger, you got to come on the call and share that with the group. Um, over the last few weeks, I, we and I always say this, we've had you know, dozens of testimonials from people that just get off to a bang. You know, they do six, seven listings their, you know, their first week. And then we've had, the last couple of weeks, we've had people that kind of got off to a slow start and uh, then all of a sudden they caught fire. And, Roger, I guess you're somewhere in between. Would you, how long have you been getting the leads, Roger? How many months? Two. Two months. So would you just kind of share your most recent experience? I think it's awesome with the group. I really appreciate it. Uh, sure. My most recent experience was with, with uh, I compressed the time before I started trying to figure out what I was going to do uh, with this new list that I received for uh, November. Uh, my first list uh, sat in my email, and I just kind of went back to it and started looking at it and start overcoming uh, all the dialogues in my head, my mind, my gut on now, how am I going to do this? And then I would go back through all of the quick, uh, uh, all of the quick lessons that were in there, and I started trying to figure out what am I going to say. Picked out, uh, picked out uh, uh, a couple of, of uh, things, and uh, and 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 pulled out the letters that were on the, um, uh, the 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 first the sample letters, and I hate them, uh, but that's okay. I'm changing that, uh, <laughs> okay. and and. and uh, I started saying, that's not me. That I, I don't sound like that. I don't talk like that. That's, that sounds like somebody else. And so uh, my first list probably took me two or three weeks to try to get my head wrapped around, now what am I going to say when I make the call and when I did it? And I just started writing out my own dialogues based upon the, the framework that, were, that was available. So the second list I got, uh, I compressed that three, two or three, f almost four weeks before I did anything. I uh, uh, I uh, started making phone calls just off of the list, and then and in the back of my mind, I'm I'm thinking I got to get a letter out. I got to get a letter out. Got to get a letter out, and just uh, uh, just started overcoming the reluctance to make the phone call to the attorneys and to the uh, personal representatives. It was easier for me to talk to the attorneys because I, I, I had the expectation that they were going to say, oh, I don't want you to get And I did get some of that. And so a few of them said, well, I've got some things working and might be, might be, uh, might be something that we can work with. And then uh, I called Chad on, on one of the things. And he said, well, have you talked to the personal representatives? Yeah. No, I don't want to do that. I don't. Uh, uh, okay, that's a great point, Chad. I'll go do that. And so, I started calling the, the personal representatives and got some traction uh, on that. This last list, as I uh, as I got it, I got through the first list and and I got the mailer out uh, to all of the attorneys on the first list, and I started making my calls first to the uh, uh, the PRs, and I figured that if I do what I'm most most reluctant to do. I can master it instead of letting it master me. And I just really just started diving in. And while I'm talking to the, the PRs during that calling session that I have blocked out, that's another discipline that I've had to, to do is just block out times. Don't bother me. Go home, find a, a coffee house, and make my phone calls and find a way to, to, uh, to make notes on each phone call. And... While I was on that calling list, I got an incoming call from uh, uh, from the first list. It was an attorney that uh, said, we got your letter. You called us a couple of times. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, we have an estate that we'd like for you to take. Give us a uh, uh, a little bit a little bit of information on this. I said, what, what is it that, uh, what stage of the probate are you in now? Boy, was that a great question. I had no idea what I was asking, but I asked the question anyway. And uh, she said, well, the, uh, the deceased uh, died a couple, of, uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, 
the the family doesn't know what what they have. Uh, we're going to email you some county records. We'd like for you to take a look at it and see uh, see what you can come up with. Uh, and I said, well, I can do that, but I certainly want to uh, stop by and visit with you and and see what your objectives and what your expectations are. And we can uh, and where the where we stand on uh, with the, where the where the family is, and um, and it, all of this is coming from the probate mastery classes that I've reviewed three times, <laughs> as well as the all of the stuff that's on the ATL site, and then rejecting no not rejecting, taking what I don't like and rewording it into my own my own stuff, and so. Um, I show up, I get the email, and I look at it, and it's uh, like uh, 200 acres in Denton County the, and 200 acres in uh, Washington County. And um, I, I started looking at where they were, and I went, holy cow, this 200 acres in, in uh, Washington County is in inside the city limits of Fayetteville. Um, that's interesting. Look at the other one in Benton County. It looks like it's all agricultural, several chicken houses on it, and a turkey, uh, Cargill turkey uh, operation uh, contiguous to it. And I'm saying, hmm, there's a possible buyer. Uh, and I started just going down, pulled up the GIS, mapped out the GIS before I go to see the attorney to try to provide her with some value on the front end. She, we sit, I get into her office, we sit down, and uh, she says, tell me a little bit about what you do. Here's some of the things that I've changed in my wording. Uh, and I said, I've assembled a network of professional service providers that uh, can help the families overcome this transition in their life uh, and allows them to move on uh, with uh, what they have, certainly with the highest level of, of service that I can provide with a heartfelt uh, message and I take my business as a servant leader to, to help them through these programs. She loved me at that point. And uh, that was just kind of a real quick uh, quick thing. She said, well, tell me about these this network of service. I've got movers. I've got cleaners. I've got repair people. And I put all of that up front uh, so that they can see well, you know, you've got all of these services. That's really great. And I, and I said, yes, and I'm a realtor. Uh, and uh, what I can do to help you is create an appraisement for an approximation of the value to, to let the family know where it is. I have appraisers that we can get into if we need to get into appraisals. And certainly I have investors that can give you uh, an offer pretty quickly and doing that. And she just sit there and, and, and if, if they want to have repairs done, I've got contractors that will that will help with this. So all of that is the, the value to the family and the, and the attorney because it takes – and what the attorney says, and at the last thing I said, I finally put it into my attorney's speech is – what all this means to you is it's going to save you time. You can devote your time to other uh, other clients that are billable, that's billable. And what I do is take off all of this coordination and headaches and dealing with the family. Uh, by the way, how's the uh, family dynamics as a result of the passing of Mr. Reading? And wow, all of a sudden, I'm her guy. And she says, here. We're not. They're not ready to to to. to uh, she said. I called the, com the the family, the mom, and I said, "Do you have a realtor or somebody that you want to use?" She said, "No, I don't have. I don't know anybody like that." So, I remember your letter and your two phone calls, and you got the phone call. Hey, Roger. So, I don't mean to. I don't mean to interrupt you. I, the the good part. Would you share with everybody what the value of the property is? Just the land inside the city limits of Fayetteville because it is in a, a developmental zone. It can be developed and there's development all around it. Uh, 200 acres uh, at the bottom end. Uh, bottom end of the market is about $32,000 an acre. It's about uh, $6 million. A little $6 over $6 million. million. Do, you, do you have any doubt just in the brief experience that you've had that you're going to get the listing? Uh, she didn't ask me to uh, move towards that. She asked me to uh, do a, uh, an appraisement or evaluation that she can take to the uh, family. Uh, and I've done this with all of my listing appointments. Is given this is uh, a quick sale price. This is a uh, this is where I think the market is, and this is uh, pushing the appraisal value. Uh, 
uh, on the property. Right. And, it's, and, and um, she said, "There's a, that's exactly what I need. Uh, well, I guess I was, what I'm saying, do you think you're going to have any, when, you know, it, do, it sounds like you've got a motivated seller that does want to sell. Do you think you're going to have any competition getting this listing? It's your, I, don't it's, th- I don't think so, but I've yeah. learned something on that one phone call, on that one visit with the attorney when she's showing me that. Uh, the next phase, and I should have said it then, was I did say, I'm interested in listing the property and selling the property. And she said, we're not ready for that. All I want is a price. And I'm sitting there going, uh, "Okay, I haven't I haven't thought this objection through yet. I have to get th- I have to get through this one and uh, uh, Roger, come get up that with a response. get that listed and sold. And I think you paid for about 50 years worth of your leads. Uh, of course, and a <laughs> so, website and, and all the all the all the material. <laughs> and what what? And I don't mean to interrupt you. I want to make time for other people to ask questions, possibly of you. And we've already got a questioner in the queue. But what I really liked about it was, you know, you're not a seasoned prospector. You had some reluctance. And uh, it's funny because I've said this so many times before, and Chad and I ran into this um, at the event. People really have a misconception that you're going to be that you're going to be come across as an ambulance chaser or something like that. And it never comes up. You're you're. You're dealing with people that, you know, it's been a few months since the passing. They've taken the time to file the probates and say, hey, I want to do something with this with this estate. Um, they're not local. I'm, I'm taking it the heirs were not local, correct? They were in another part of the country? Uh, one is, two, two are not. Okay. And um, they're usually very happy to hear from somebody that can reach out and actually help them with, you know, with something they very much need help with. So you got one potential six month million dollar listing, and the the other one is probably worth what only a few hundred thousand. The, no, the, the agricultural the, land. The the agricultural is probably about two million. Oh, well, gee, only eight million altogether. That that is awesome. Why well, I, I I really uh, chat any comments about what? Um, and we do have a questioner in the queue. I want to get to that person, but any uh, comments yeah. about the way Roger proceeded with this? I, I'm I've been ready to burst this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ron, you have me grinning from ear to ear because you have you did everything perfectly. And if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. Do not try to copy our scripts. Don't try to like you need to make this your own. And that's what we find the people that are most successful. They take and you use the word framework, which is exactly what we provide. So take the basic concepts and and the progression of the conversation and just what we call the probate USP is what you did with the attorney. And you did exactly what what you're supposed to. You you show them how you can provide value to them as a professional. And you do the same thing with the executor. You show them how you can be the solution to their problem. But, I mean, you that was, I'll say, near-perfect execution. You did everything in the right order. And, I man, I hope you get an $8 million listing and sale. That, that's an incredible story. But, well, it, I, I mean, you, you, earned, you earned every bit of it. Can I get you to say that to my girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Hey, thank you, Roger. We have a question in the queue. I'm going to leave. You, uh, Go ahead, Chad. I was just going to ask Roger if he listened to her as well as he did me. <laughs> have a good relationship. Roger, I'm going to leave you unmuted because people might have a question for you, but I'm going to go ahead and thank you. For, and anybody else, please, it doesn't have to be for Roger, anything related to pursuing probate as a niche, anything, issues you're having, questions, anything we can help you with, hit star six and then hit the number one. And I'm going to go ahead and unmute our next questioner. Area code 904, you're up. Uh, yes, a question I have uh, regards the service that your company provides about uh, uh, mailing the initial uh, letters to either the personal representative or the attorney or whoever. Yes, sir. And go ahead. I would, I'd like, I'd like, uh, part of the problem that I have now is I am I use several different lead generation services and they're providing quite a few leads and I'm having difficulty keeping up with everything. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at the all the leads mailing service as a possible solution to that. The question is how does it work? Do I modify a letter that you already have or do I write my own? Who do they send it to? Do they have any follow-up? Sure. Good question. Tim? Okay. So let me make sure I, I I can't kind of answer all your questions at once. The, we give you uh, samples of letters, and actually we're in the process today of probably doubling the number of options that you have, so that you have a lot of different options. And as as Chad said, 
We encourage you to download them, look at them, consider them as a framework, and modify them. I, I also want to make the point that uh, you don't have to be a great writer to get this done. If you want to make a few changes, we have really, really excellent communicators on our staff, and they can certainly take care of, of any of the copyright needs. Once you change it, we, we always go through them anyway to make sure that we're helping you put your best foot forward. But once you have done your, your piece of that, you simply upload the letter back to us. It's part of the order process. Uh, you can upload the letter. You can upload a picture if you want to do that. You can upload your letterhead. We'll assemble a custom document for you. Uh, we send it back to you as a proof to take a look at to make sure you're comfortable with what's going out, and uh, we take it from there. When the, when the letters are mailed, uh, you receive a copy of it. We add your name to the list as well so that you receive a copy of the letter. When you receive the copy of the letter, you'll know that your, your prospects have also received the letter, and it's time to start making those prospecting uh, follow-up phone calls. Now, I, that's one part of your question. Did you have additional additional questions about that? No, that seems pretty clear. Uh, how effective are the letters sent out by your company versus letters perhaps sent out by uh, real estate agents? Well, they're, ours, ours are the best in the world, and no one is equal to them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, so, and and you wouldn't expect me to say something less than that. But here's here's the reality: we we have literally spent a great amount of time making sure that we do a really really good job of getting the letters opened. The most difficult process, part of the process in all of this, is to make sure the letters get open. Once it's once it's opened and somebody's taking a look at it, then you got a couple of seconds to make the right impression and and do it the right way. And we continue to modify what we do, but we, we make sure that they go out in an envelope that's envelope's going to get opened. The envelope has a, a custom font on it, and I know that you've received things in the mail that have a what looks like a script font on them, and it's very obvious that that's an ad from somebody, and you know they typically go in that round file. And ours, they don't do that. They come out in a greeting card size envelope. They can either be on white paper, buff paper, or multicolored paper. Uh, they look like a greeting card, and and they feel like a greeting card. They're they're pretty thick. They're very solid, and the font that we use, you will not be able to to determine that it's not a handwritten font. It absolutely appears to be that way, and we spend a lot of time to get it right. There are several options, but we have one that we like to use most. Once they get it, the letter itself, that's a lot of that's up to your content. But we make sure the letter gets there, goes to the right address, and we spend a lot of time making sure that. All of that information is correct so that once you do get it, it's going to go where it's supposed to go. It's a valid address, and it goes directly to that personal representative or to that attorney. After that, the next step in it is the most critical part of that. The letters by themselves are strictly a door opener. You may get some responses back from them, and hopefully you will, and certainly our customers do do that. But what we find is that once, once you do the follow-up and you start doing it, you'll hear people say, Oh, yeah, I remember that I got your letter. Well, they did get it. They didn't call you back. But you've got a reason to follow up with them because you're following up to make sure that they got it because you're there. Just I'm going to go back to what Roger said. You're there to make sure that you're providing a good service to them and you like to provide a service to people who have uh, houses in probate. And that's what you're here for. And you're an expert. And you just wanted to make sure that they got it. And if they had any questions, you can answer them. And that's a very easy way to open that door. So that's why I think we do a better job of this than just about anybody, and uh, we'd love to do it for you. Okay. Sounds good. And, and right. on, on our site, there's, there's, there's numerous examples. I think we have six or seven templates now. There may be more. We have, um, six, now, we have six now, but we're actually adding a couple of postcards and some attorney letters and, and a, another one that's completely handwritten. So you get a lot of things to pick from. Right. And Chad, I know Chad has gotten in with, you know, some people tell us there's a difference between an East Coast and a West Coast letter. And, and we had a client in the West Coast that just did a couple mailings, wasn't getting responses. And Chad tweaked his letter for him that to be something that he felt was more, uh, would be better, more readily received by his market. But y you will notice the common denominator in all the letters is you're giving them options. That's the essence of what you want to do. People love to buy. They hate to be sold. They, they, love, they don't like to be told what to do. 
And the essence is that you can give them more options than anybody else, and regardless of which option they choose, you're the one that can help them. That, that's really the essence of the letter. How it's delivered, um, Chad is as good as anybody at helping you tweak that. But we, we, we only, I think we actually developed two or th half of those letters ourselves. The other half are letters that agents have helped us to, to develop. They've all, all six of those letters, we've had a number of agents that have been highly successful. So I'm not sure it's a case of one being better than the other. They're all good. But don't, you know, make it your own. Tweak it. Add it. If you have a testimonial, even one, you know, if you, ha if you help your parents with their estate, if there's one example you can give them, one testimonial, if you can customize it a little bit to really be you, like Roger's doing, that, that's really what makes it effective. Right, and don't and don't kill yourself by you know over analyzing it and and really get down and you know make sure that you're wordsmithing it really hard. Let us do that work for you. That's what we're here for, and that's what we get paid to do to make sure that it looks good. So I mean, if you can you know add, I'd like to say something about this. Uh, you know, put something like that in here. We're happy to work with you, and we'll contact you and make sure that it's right, and you'll get to proof it before it goes out. But we're trying to get this done expeditiously, and like Roger said, you know, he labored over this a while, and we don't want you to do that. We want you to move quickly and, and be expeditious, and we'll help you get it done. Okay, great. Sounds good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Roger, and thanks for that question. Guys, We sometimes we have one or two questions. Sometimes we have a dozen. There's time. we got another five minutes. If anybody else has a question, just hit star six, pause for a second, and then hit one. We Am got I a still on? What's that? Am I still on? You're it's still probably. on. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Jim, is it any way, I, I don't know, I didn't check my office email here, but is, or my office inbox for, for mail. Is there any way that you can get uh, put my name on all of my listings so that I can see when it comes in the mail to me? Because that's a real uh, time, uh, time notifier for me when I can do follow-up listings. Yeah, on, on yeah Roger, we, we, actually, we actually do do that. We actually do it. I think maybe part of the problem is that uh, and this is something that we're finding out. Oftentimes, the address that we have may be the address of your office, and someone in your office may be opening it and, and they may be throwing it away. But uh, you may you want to make sure that the address that we send that letter to, because we append a letter to the customer to every mailing that goes out. You want to make sure that it's one that you know you'll get. So if you're not, if the address that we have on file for you isn't that. If you'll just drop a note to support at alltheleads.com and say, please send my, uh, my mailing uh, con confirmation letter to this address, we'll be sure to do that for you. Thank you. Excellent. Two more questions. Great, guys. And then we'll wrap it up today. Area code 206, you're up next. Area code 206295, are oh, you there? Is this, and is this me? Am I on? You're on. Yes, sir. Um, I just uh, subscribed to your service a week or so ago, and so I've been trying to prepare and everything um, and get ready. I guess our expected delivery is, is, on, is on the 12th, so that's pretty soon. <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, get everything, uh, you know, uh, systems in place and everything. And <clears throat> I'm set to get about 225 leads a month, and that's a, a, a pretty big stack of leads for just one person. So I'm I'm in the process of trying to develop a system where I, I have like maybe 10 to 15 phone calls a day and I spread them out uh, and then follow them up five days later with the letters and all that and setting up an action plan and top producer to, to have that, that happen. But is that, am, am I going down the right path here or am I going down uh, the wrong avenue? Do you, what's your experience with other people who have that kind of a quantity? I'm going to let you. I'm going to let Chad answer it, but just off the top of my head, there's no wrong way to contact people, <laughs> so it's not wrong. Uh, Chad, any suggestions how we could do it better? No, I mean, everybody prospects differently, and I mean, uh, uh, like an ISA or, or a rock star prospector, you know, they'll, they'll block out their call blocks, close the door, just like Roger was talking about, and, and what I, I teach people to do is you want to hit Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. There's, there's almost a three times chance that you'll get better contact and conversion during those times. Um, there's a study in step five of subscriber resources. You can find a study that was done by MIT on 86,000 real estate prospecting calls. So 
So that can help you be more effective in your prospecting. And you you just got to work on efficiency, at, you know, at your own pace. I mean, if you can't make 100 calls, that doesn't mean don't make 25. I think that's awesome that you're doing that. Um, one of the things that you, you might consider to leverage your time, since you do have such a large list, is, you know, ringless voicemail. And that's something that I, I don't recommend for most agents because live contacts are always best. But if you're if you're having trouble reaching your whole list, you could always do a ringless voicemail, meaning that you can use a piece of software like uh, Fly Broadcast or or uh, voice casting from Voice Logic, upload your list, upload a message, pull the trigger, and you call the 225 people in five minutes. And then you're waiting for an inbound callback. So your 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 prospecting becomes inbound prospecting. Personally, that's how I, I like to do my business because I, that, I, I have multiple things going on, and that's how I've done it. And, so, and Chad, how about how about um, typically we recommend send the letter out first? Do you think it's it's bad to to call first then send the letter? I don't think it's bad. I mean, it just it's it just changes your you know how you approach the phone call. And we've had people that have been really successful with that. I mean, some people say, well, that's great, Chad, but I, I strongly disagree with you. I'm getting on the phones right now, and that's fine. You just, you know, I use the letter to warm up my phone call, and I say, "Hey, this is Chad. I sent a letter last week. Just wanted to make sure you under, you got it, and you understood why I sent it, and if there's anything I can do to help." And that you would just need to change the front end of that phone call, and and you know, get to the point, and, you know, a little quicker. I like doing it after the letter because I don't have to go through on the phone. Uh, I'm calling you because you may have an, you may be the executor of an estate that I'm looking for. Yada yada yada. It's easier for me to say I sent you a letter, wanted to make sure you got it. Um, and that's something like in, in in probate mastery session two, we we take about an hour and a half and really show you ways to be the most efficient in, in your prospecting. So, for example, when you get your list, I take one day, or, or excuse me, about 30 minutes. So I'll, I'll download the CSV sheet. I add columns for the month and like I add probate hyphen 20, you know, November, 2015. And then I'll do the import into top producer. And then that I can, tr I can track that list by month and year <clears throat> from now on. Once that list goes in the top producer, I'll create a schedule and the schedule consists of the, the mail drop date, the mail delivery date and the phone call days. Once that schedule is there, I go to Google calendar and populate all that. You can also do it using an action plan and top producer. If you're, you know, an advanced CRM user, and you, you know how to do that. It sounds like you can. But just taking that time on the front, you know, spend that 30 minutes to an hour to, to really drill down on the exact times you'll be doing this and eliminate the distractions, you'll, you'll, you'll have more effective prospecting and more efficient prospecting just by if you can adopt that discipline. Excellent. One more question. Any, is that did, did we answer your question sufficiently? And if you need any additional help, like Chad said, uh, between calls, guys, all, the best way to get us, there's, we, we have four partners and we have several employees now. Send an email to support at alltheleads.com. Any question you have, anything you need help with, all of us will look at that, and the best person to help you will get right back to you. Did we answer your question sufficiently for now? Well, yeah, I, I just wanted to kind of clarify what I was planning on doing since there were 200, 225 leads is this sort of 10 to 15 leads a day phone system uh, because, it, you know, in the second month it's going to be 450 and in the next month it's going to be 675 or 680, whatever, uh, you know, if, 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 uh, if things continue to, you know, stack on month after month. So um, I was planning on the first month, making sure it was a, a, a real phone call and going trying, you know, I know that it'll still maybe go to voicemail a lot of the time, but still make that effort. And then the, I set up an account with uh, the voice casting company, uh, Voice Logic, so that the second two months would probably be those those straight out broadcasts. I guess you got to send a couple hundred at a time of those, or in order for them to be effective because of their minimum charges. But I think it made sense the first time to try to do it by voice. Just because of the quantities, uh, that, that by the second and third month it made more sense to since I if I hadn't heard back to send it to voice casting in those instances. Are they telling you there's a a a, a minimum number that you can do? Yeah, uh, I think I it was about three or four hundred bucks to sign up for uh, three to ten thousand minutes or something like that. 
uh, I mean, it's a 3,000 minute list. And they, they said if you break it down, it's something like 11 cents a call, and uh, in, there's a $30 minimum. So if you're not calling a couple of hundred people, your, your, your cost per call would start to skyrocket if you were just broadcasting, say, 30 or 40 at a time. So that's the way right. they explained it okay. to me. Yeah, if you need, yeah, do me a favor and just drop a note to support, uh, support at allthelegion.com and ask us to check a little bit for you because we work directly with them and recommend them. And I want to make sure that they make it as easy as possible on our subscribers to get this done. So if you'll drop a note just to remind us to, uh, you know, what your experience was there, let's see if we can make this a little bit easier on you because if you're going to do 600 of these in a month, and you want to automate some of that, we need to we need to help you get started with it sooner rather than later and not make it economically unfeasible. And I'm going to let you get to your last question, Jim. Thank yeah, you, sir. And, and by the way, when you ask that question, I'm I'm thinking of how many people in the call are saying uh, why you, they feel really sorry for you to get 15, 20 leads a month. But right, exactly. <laughs> that's a good problem to have, to have too many highly qualified sellers that, that you can handle at a time. I mean, that's an awesome problem to have. Yeah, um, no, all no, right. quite, I'm very excited. Yeah, thank you very much, and welcome. Chad, I just unmuted you. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, all right, we'll go to our last question of the day. Area code 202, you're up. Hi, uh, this is Kent. Uh, just if I, I have a question, but if I may, just share my experience briefly. Uh, yesterday I received my first set of leads, which I was pretty stoked, um, and I actually was planning on sending a letter first, but from the standpoint of just wanting to do it, and I, I think I have 119 leads in, in where I am. And what I would suggest somebody looking into, if they have it, I already have a dialer. And the dialer, I think, could really address the previous caller's uh, question as well as if you want to actually have an ability to touch the people, you know, versus just the – I'm not familiar with the, the technology very much. I mean, I, I understand what – I think what it does. But I think it really, it really did a nice job of taking the information, and it's a nice graphical view where it's like a CRM, if you will, and you can you can pause and you can do the dialer. Uh, Mojo is one that you can use. I use Vulcan Seven because I already have the that uh, doing it. And I'm not one to really use the dialer much, but and I've had to get used to and comfortable with it. But I, I just think that's a, a really good way of managing it. And I made I think I'm looking at the report. I made uh, like 67 calls last night, uh, yesterday uh, or last evening, and you know, I think I contacted like 12 people as a result. Excellent. Yeah, so I'm really, really very, very uh, uh, upbeat about this. So my question is the use of you know, new probate and all that, like when we have like a, if we get like a probate uh, website and we put in the letter as is recommended, is probate really the best? I mean, that's what we call it. Is that like what the, like a personal representative would use or is a state or, or what have people found kind of like in, you know, what's the best like the language to use? You mean from a terminology standpoint? What do they call yeah. it? Yeah, I, either like you know, I mean, we call it probate, and I understand, you know, you know that's what it is. But like from in the letter, say, or or like on the phone call, I found myself saying the state versus. I, I just I'm just trying to get a feel for this. Yeah, we do that. in the letter. We do the same thing. We, we refer to it as the estate of Sally Jones, the estate of John Smith. Yes. So it's yeah. referred to as that. I mean, pe people typically discuss it as I'm handling the probate for the estate of such and such. So. They're somewhat okay. interchangeable, but we always do refer to it as the estate of because if there is real estate in it, it'll always be considered as an estate. And I put that in quotes, you know, but it's generally yeah. that's the right way to refer to it. Okay. Okay. And um, and what have you found overall in the letter? I noticed that it's kind of the, the cash investor uh, is used. Uh, I know it probably depends upon the market to market perhaps or you know, your style, but like leading with the cash investor versus doing the consultative approach. Uh, just curious as far as what you have found in your, in anyone's experience on that. Yeah. One of, one of the reasons you know, we all can probably answer that briefly, but one of the reasons we do that, we have found if you have any competition, it's going to be from an investor. So we, we yeah. lead with that to let them know that, Hey, I can, can do, do the same, I can do the same thing, but I can do all one right. better by trying to get market value. And I, Chad, you wanted to add to that, or was it Tim? No, it's Chad. No, that was me. I, I was going to say the same thing. Like that is a, is vital to 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 anyone who's who's almost anywhere. I mean, especially in in metro markets where you have a lot of investors nailing the we buy houses type 
you know, collateral. Um, the other thing, though, is I would say nine out of ten of my conversations start with discussing the cash offer. Uh, it's ring, ring. Chad, this is Bill Jones, and, and you called me, or you sent me a letter about my dad's estate and bringing a cash buyer or, or whatever. What are you talking about? How, how did you get my information? And it's a little bit abrasive on the front, but they called me instead of the other 15 letters from investors. And it's your job there to just, you know, change the tone of the conversation. Say, oh, well, Bill, thanks so much. I'm really glad you called. Yeah, wh that's one of the things we do. We we do work with over 100 investors, and we can sell homes quickly for cash. We found that nine times out of ten, that's not really in the seller's best interest. Um, but we can help you do things like clean out the personal property, get the most money for that, um, you know, renovate the home to get top market value. It, it really depends on what the family's goals are for the estate. But by the way, Bill, you didn't say, is there a home per sale that you need help selling? And you just segue and like oh, end on that open-ended question. And even though he called you to talk about a cash offer, because that was the hook, they'll usually forget about it. And I always, through through asking good questions, I, I determine target date, level of motivation, and condition of property. And I use those three variables to decide, is this a cash deal or is this a, a conventional deal? And if it's a conventional, is it retail ready or is it more of an as-is sale? And as, as I'm having the conversation, I'm qualifying, you know, the person and the property to decide which bucket they go in. And that's how I'll make my suggestions and prepare for the appointment. So it's it's it's... I'll say it's vital to have that in your letter because my experience, that's what the most of my leads that have turned okay. into listings, that's what they've, they, that was the hook they responded to. Very few of them have I actually bought. I usually end up selling the house. And when I go to the appointment, I take them to cash price, a suggested, you know, more suggested uh, conventional price, and then kind of <clears> high <throat> in the sky price if we, or a rehab price if they're willing to invest back in, in, into repairs. And I'll give them the option. And nine times out of ten, they'll take the, the conventional as is. Um, sometimes they'll, every once in a while, so they'll be willing to invest, or, or they, they'll just want to dump it for cash. But I think, but that's that's the reason it's there for differentiation, and man, because it's just a really good hook to start the conversation. Sure. Okay. Hey guys, thank you so much. This our thirty minute call went forty five minutes, but it was just too good to cut any of you off. I, I really appreciate everybody showing up virtually everyone stayed till the end um as we mentioned before if you need any help before next thursday please support it all the leads dot com i always i always uh, end these calls by saying uh, first of all thank you come back next week next if you take one idea one inspiration take uh, uh you know the stories that you heard the success stories today and take one idea and go out and implement it and come back next week and share your success and your experiences with the group. Thank you so much, guys. Make it a great week. We'll talk to you same time next Thursday.